Good evening, YouTube. Things that fascinate me about a group of people on YouTube. <laughs> Truth is. <laughs> it's like we've entered some kind of uh, religious cult where you're either a believer or a non believer. People who have a vested interest in believing in something turn a blind eye to the facts. Something that interests me about some of these people in this group is they're always reminding people about their authority to speak on the subjects that they're speaking about. Which is a massive tell for me. It tells me something that they keep repeating how they have authority to be an authority to talk about the things that they're talking about I was an ex-police officer it's not just said once and left at that you're constantly reminded about that every time they do a video as you know I once worked for the police and blah de blah de blah When I watch them do that, it makes me laugh. Because Bill Maloney uh, was constantly out there telling you how he hated the state and had a grudge and a grievance against the state. He's some kind of anarchist. <laughs> it's like trying too hard, trying a little bit too hard to convince people of which side you're on. They all do it. Sean Atwood, Sharon Gale, Andrew Gine, Bill Maloney, John Wedger. Wilfred Wong, all reminding people constantly about their authority, that they know things that you don't. And that their word is the authority in a certain situation. Me, I think people can think for themselves. We live in a world though, don't we, where, um, where you're supposed to know everything. You're supposed to be very informed about everything. Some people like to look clever, so... They believe in things as facts that aren't actually facts at all. But if that's what the majority believe, they usually go along with it. quite difficult being a lone voice being shouted down all the time by the group <laughs> anyway I don't know where that came from I was thinking about coincidence you know too coincidental not to be linked. In the words of the detective, 
investigating the murder of woman police constable Nisha Patel Nazari. I told people on here that I was set up for a firearms offence, which is true. Kidnapping and firearms. So I allegedly kidnapped uh, somebody who had been in the Royal Irish Regiment. I kidnapped them at gunpoint and took them on a van drive in their van. <laughs> the plan was apparently that I was going to. Um, the plan was they told me they were an alarm engineer. This was the scenario. Uh, and I was taking them to a post office to um, go up a set of ladders, which didn't exist. Um, uh, I disconnect the, the alarm, and then I was going to go in and rob the post office. <laughs> right? Okay. Yeah. There's so much wrong with that, it's ridiculous. It's uh, not my modus operandi, <laughs> for a start. It's not the sort of crime that I would commit. And also, it's a stupid crime. <laughs> and also, there were no ladders. At four o'clock in the morning, while we were in the van. <laughs> Just ridiculous. Anyway, they were very brave, uh, this person from the Royal Irish Regiment, because while they had a gun, which they believed to be real, pointed at their head, they drove into the front of Brixton Police Station uh, at about four in the morning, and there just happened to be the only two armed response vehicles sitting outside Brixton Police Station at four in the morning who were waiting at the traffic lights going somewhere else when they witnessed this van driving illegally and pulling to the front of the station so they came over to check out what it was about and I had immediately had four or five guns pointed at my head <laughs> yeah. yeah so uh, I knew it was a setup. Um, within about five minutes of being in a van with this person, who I wasn't kidnapping at gunpoint. <laughs> uh, so I was looking at 18 years in jail, my barrister told me. I don't think my barrister's worked on my be off to be perfectly honest with you they did get an 18 year sentence cut down to uh, four and a half year sentence for possession of a firearm stroke imitation firearm with intent to cause fear of violence And they drop the full. They, they drop the kidnapping down to false imprisonment. I went on quite a long hunger strike about that. Nobody took any notice. But of course, people had already been screwing with my life before that point. You see, quite majorly screwing with my life. This was just another. Another incident of people fucking with my life and showing me that they got the power to fuck with my life, really. Telling me that they could have shot me if they wanted to. Uh, this was in uh, this was in 1994, just four years after I'd been released from Grendon. which started some kind of operation on me the moment I left the place. <coughs> anyway, when I come out from that sentence, um, of which I never admitted my guilt, 
Uh, there are charges that I might have admitted guilt to, but um, what they say happened did not happen. Just a coincidence, there was two of the only armed response units sitting outside Brixton Police Station at four o'clock in the morning on their way to somebody else, wait somewhere else waiting at the traffic lights. When fortuitously this event came along. <laughs> I guess I must just be unlucky, right? So when I was released from that sentence, uh, not very long after at all, there was an incident outside a pub. Um, I'd been down the shop, I bought a couple of things, I was on my way back home, it was a warm summer's night, people were outside the pub drinking, but there was a group of people looking very distressed creating a little bit of a scene and I had to walk through this crowd to get home and I couldn't help notice that they were very distressed and I asked if everybody was all right and then I was told this tale about how somebody had just been threatened with a gun inside the pub if they've reported it to the police would they like to report it to the police I lived across the road I had a telephone and that's what they did the police never showed up for that and then a little while later I heard a commotion so I looked outside from my front door I could see the entrance to the pub and there was a man punching the sort of little window panes through in the door little sort of six by eight window panes he was punching them through So I did what a good citizen should do, called the police, who ignored it. And I'm watching this bloke and he uh, put his hand through the broken windows and opened the door and went inside, so I called him again. I didn't respond. So I'm watching, watching the door of the pub. Five minutes goes by, no police. So I phone them again. They don't respond. And I hear uh, people shouting upstairs. A woman screaming. So I phone them again, they still don't respond. I'm getting quite um, agitated now. I'm beginning to think I should go in there and um, confront this man I've just seen breaking into a pub. But I've just been released from prison for something that I was set up for. And earlier on in the evening, people were talking to me about somebody having a gun inside the pub. So I called the police again, and still they don't show up. I can hear this woman inside going, get off me, get off me, leave me alone, leave me alone. I'm feeling quite panicked, I'm feeling like I should do something. I don't know what's happening upstairs. I can hear a woman in distress. And I know a man's broken into the pub. And it doesn't look like the police are going to turn up. So I went in and I went up the stairs. 
and I went to the room where the noise was coming from and a man was on top of a woman raping a woman, pinning her down and she was saying, get off me, get off me. And I panicked and I ran out of the pub. I could have jumped on him straight away. But quite frankly, having recently just been set up for something, I didn't know how this was going to fucking pan out. It looked like another set up to me. I mean, if I jumped on the geezer and pulled him off, it's quite possible they could have turned around and said, I'm the one that broke the windows in the pub and broke into the pub. Anyway, I thought I'm not going in there with a weapon, without a weapon, so I went home and I got my bike lock, big heavy bike lock it was. Do some damage with that. So just as I went to go back through the front door of the pub, the woman come downstairs in her nightdress. I asked if she was all right. I asked if she wanted help. I told her I called the police. I said to her, I think we maybe need to get you out of here, love. She said, I can't, I've got children upstairs. I said, is he gonna hurt the children? And she said, no. And I said, look, if you wanna come away, we'll phone the police, you can phone the police, they'll take some notice of you. So that's what happened, she came to my house and we called the police again. It took them like four hours to show up. Nothing happened about that. No charges were brought. And then about a year later, I came home and there was a, a note through the door from a detective asking me if I'd contact them urgently. So I did. Uh, and they, um, they asked me about that night and told me it had happened again that a man had raped the woman that they were in a relationship and he'd raped the woman in front of the children and would I appear as a witness as to the previous incident so I said I would He got found not guilty. I mean, that's a pretty big coincidence, right? <coughs> of course, that's documented, evidentially, what happened there. I tried to ask questions about the police, like why they, why they didn't show up straight away and all that. There was a woman in danger. Never got any answers to any of that. Of course, while we're also talking about coincidences, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of these very odd, extreme coincidences in my life. That genuinely don't seem like coincidences at all. You know, in about 1981, when I was raped by a female friend, totally out of the blue. Well, there'd been a lot of weird grooming stuff going on before that. 
you know, I was with a group of people that I was kind of, um, that I ended up with after being a homeless kid on the street and being abused on the street. Traumatised kid. Looking for a place of safety. raped a couple of doors down from where Prince Andrew spent a night it seems a bit a bit coincidental if you'd had the life that I'd had and that happened to you you would wonder if there was something in that I'm 60 nearly and I still wonder if there was something in that. What I don't wonder about anymore is the fact that I was groomed as a child. And that some people are being covered up for. I don't doubt that at all. So it was pure coincidence then. That uh, when I came out from serving that prison sentence for this uh, kidnapping and firearms thing that uh, I'm alleged to have commit, that um, not long afterwards I'll get put with uh, Lady Emma Herbert, who's the daughter of the Earl of Pembroke, who directed a film at Coo Stark starred in would seem to be like another massive coincidence I mean I'm not the sort of person that's um, <laughs> moving in these kind of circles with these people you know royalty <laughs> The truth about my life is it makes no sense to me and it never has, not since I was a little kid really. It makes no sense to me. I've spent my whole life trying to make sense. Of lots of very, very, very weird events in my life. And I can't make any sense out of it at all. And the people that could give me some answers about these things are very, very, very reluctant to give me any answers at all. I mean, you could also say that it was quite odd that I ended up in Parliament Square that day with Bill Maloney, John Wedger, Brian Harvey and Ben Fellows. Of course, I need to point out to YouTube that this is a story that I'm actually involved in. I know I'm a no-one like, you know, as people keep trying to point out to everyone. not important in it but actually it's just another event in my life that's pretty fucking weird and I know the people on YouTube are here for entertainment purposes but um, most people anyway it's all a bit of a lark but this is my actual life now I'm caught up in trying to tell a story about it that nobody actually fucking believes <laughs> so the chances of me getting any kind of closure about any of these weird events in my life before I die are non-existent 
but it's alright, you don't have to worry because I'm a narcissistic psychopath. So therefore none of it bothers me very much at all. Or you could say that diagnosing somebody as a narcissistic psychopath would pretty much guarantee that nobody is going to take what this person takes seriously. And when they start telling you about how they were set up for firearms offences or how they've been groomed in childhood, raped by a woman in the middle of a suicide attempt a couple of doors down from where Prince Andrew spent a night with Coo Stark, and then you're put with Brian Harvey during an MI5 set up in Parliament Square, I would begin to sound like some kind of narcissistic fantasist. Of course, the rape thing that happened in the pub is documented. In fact, many of these things are documented. But they're documented by the state, and the state makes it virtually impossible for me to get any of my information from anywhere. And information that should be there, such as my childhood social services records, have disappeared. There's no reassurance that they've destroyed all children's records of the same age at the same time. And why would they dis destroy social services records of children that would still be alive now? I mean, what happens in the event of uh, police investigations into paedophile rings and institutional abuse? And they want to go back and look at people's childhood records they're not there anymore so that's the end of an investigation right there's no evidence just the word of somebody I've seen something recently that I really would like to report to the police concerning the safety of a teenager or teenagers. Strictly speaking, I should have filmed what I saw. Because I could call the police right now and they'll take absolutely no fucking notice whatsoever. No interest in what I saw at all. Basically, people could do whatever they like in front of me, commit any kind of criminal offence, and I can report it, and it's going to be ignored. That's an half hour ramble from me, right? Thanks very much.